earlier this year I built a very small wind turbine and it worked quite well. Um, it's been producing electricity for about six, seven months or so, um, but it didn't quite produce enough power, which is why I decided to get rid of it and build a new, slightly bigger wind turbine. As you might remember from that video that I made about that small wind turbine, I was using a stepper motor as a generator. And that's because a stepper motor generates a relatively high voltage at relatively low speeds, which means it's very easy to make a wind turbine with it because you can just stick the turbine directly onto the shaft of that stepper motor and it generates the appropriate voltage to charge a battery. It's very simple to build. The downside of that stepper motor, however, is that the output power that it can produce is quite limited. That wasn't really an issue on the old wind turbine because the thing was quite small anyway, but now because I wanted to make a bigger turbine, I was going to need a generator that could generate more power. So clearly I was going to need something else. So I started to dig in the old pile of stuff. Uh, of things that I've collected over the years and I found a brushless electric motor and as you may or may not know a brushless electric motor is fantastic to use as a generator but this brushless motor did have one problem which is that the voltage that it produced was relatively low compared to the speed that it rotates at so uh, this motor would need to spin at over 800 rpm to generate one volt at the output which means that in order to get the 12 volts that I need, it would have to spin at over 9,000 RPM. And, well, there is no way a wind turbine, at least no wind turbine that I'm aware of, uh, is going to spin at over 9,000 RPM. So that was a problem. So what I did is I took apart this brushless motor and rewound it. So I made new coils with more turns. Uh, and that way I managed to get that output voltage quite a bit higher. So now it was able to produce 12 volts at about 1000 to 1200 RPM, which is quite a bit better, but it's still too high for a wind turbine. So therefore I also needed to build a gearbox. Now luckily I already had some gears laying around from a previous project and they happened to be sort of the right ratio as well. Uh, which is one to four. And here's what that gearbox ended up looking like. So as you can see, it's a piece of steel box section. Uh, and then the main shaft that the turbine is on has the big gear on it. And then the generator has a small gear on it. And that way the generator spins four times as fast as the turbine. For rotating the whole thing sideways, because of course the wind turbine has to be able to rotate like this as well to turn into the right wind direction, I'm using an old caster wheel that happened to fit into that piece of box section. So it's essentially we're using an old wheel as a bearing. That was quite convenient. So now that I had a generator and a gearbox, I needed to make the turbine itself. And I decided I was going to use PVC to make the blades because for many reasons PVC is absolutely great stuff to make homemade wind turbine blades. So I needed to get some huge PVC pipe to make these blades of. The problem is they don't sell those at the hardware store. The hardware store sells PVC up to about you know this big. So I had to go online and actually order a massive PVC pipe and get it delivered to make these blades. And then once I got that, it was just a matter of cutting out the blades and mounting them to an aluminium plate, which I use as the hub. So now let's take a look at the way that the wind turbine is actually electrically wired up. So the generator that we're using is a three phase AC generator, which means we have three wires coming out of it, and those will go into one single cable, which runs into the shed. Over there, the cable goes into a box which contains a three-phase rectifier. 
that thing basically takes the three phase AC from our generator and converts it into regular DC, so you know, positive and negative, that we can then use to charge a battery. Now in the old design, that would then be directly connected to the battery, but in this new setup, I've also got a current meter installed, so the, the electric current goes through a meter so that I can actually see uh, what the turbine is producing, because I, I thought that'd be kind of cool. The problem is that I did buy the wrong meter, because as you can see, this meter goes up to 3 amps, because I thought that this turbine would be producing, you know, somewhere in between 2 to 3 amps of charging current, but it turns out it can do quite a bit more than that. So when there is heavy wind, uh, the meter can easily go past 3 amps, and I, I can't quite see how much it's producing, so I'm going to have to replace that meter at some point. As you might have noticed, there is also a solar charge controller installed, and that's because I've actually bought a solar panel as well. I haven't really installed the solar panel yet, it's sitting on a chair in the backyard, it has a, a, a test setup, but it is connected, uh, so I'm also generating a bit of solar power. And then using power from the battery can be done in three different ways. First of all, things that can work on 12 volts can plug directly into a 12 volt a connection that goes straight to the battery. But of course, not everything can run on 12 volts. So for example, if you have a phone or a tablet or something else that runs on 5 volts, you can plug that into one of the USB ports that I've also installed. And finally, if you have an appliance that needs um, mains power, so 230 volts AC, well, you can also power that in this system because I've installed a 300 watt inverter. Now 300 watts is not a whole lot for an inverter, but I figured I'm not quite producing that much power anyway. It's a small setup, so buying a huge inverter would be kind of pointless. I'm not going to power a washing machine uh, from this system. The maximum power output appears to be somewhere in between 60 to 70 watts of power. That's about the best I've seen it do uh, so far. I'm not quite sure what the wind speed was during those moments. I do know that there was a fair bit of wind, but I haven't installed any actual equipment to measure that wind speed. And even if I had such equipment, it would be very difficult to measure due to the fact that the turbine is placed in a very turbulent location. I think with some modifications, I'm able to get the power output up to about 100 watts or so, which is quite good, I think. I'm pretty pleased with that. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, about the wind turbine and of course thank you for watching <laughs>